three inches away from the blade. Never cross the path of the blade with any part of your body. It's important that you read and understand your operator's manual very thoroughly and follow the safety guidelines before making that first cut. We're going to concentrate on the six basic cuts in woodworking. The cross cut, rip cut, miter cut, the bevel cross cut, bevel rip cut, and the compound bevel cut. Just a reminder, never stand directly in line with the blade or come within three inches of the blade. Never reach across the blade. Doing so may result in serious personal injury. First on the list is the straight cross cut. It's straight across the grain of the wood. Either the miter fence or the rip fence is on the table at any one time, never both. You first want to set the blade height. Push the bevel locking lever to the left. This is the mode for raising or lowering the blade. Turn the blade adjusting handle clockwise to raise the blade and counterclockwise to lower it. The blade should be set so its highest points are 1 8 to 1 quarter inch higher than the piece of wood you're going to cut. Make sure the blade is set at 90 degrees. Move the miter fence to make sure it's properly set and won't touch the blade when you cut. If needed, place outfeed support behind the saw the same height as the saw table to catch the cut piece. Make sure everything is clear of the saw and the wood you're going to cut is away from the blade. We are basically showing a test cut to demonstrate the basic cuts. It's a good idea to do a test cut before making a final cut. Okay, now turn on the saw and let the blade get up to full speed. Hold the wood firmly against the miter fence with both hands, keeping well clear of the blade. Push the miter table forward to feed the work into the blade. Don't force the piece through the blade. Let the blade work for you. When finished, turn the saw off and make sure the blade comes to a complete stop before removing any cut pieces from the table. That was pretty simple. Now let's try the second cut on the list, a miter cut. This is a vertical cut that is at any angle other than 90 degrees, the straight cross cut. Loosen the adjusting clamp on the miter fence, lower the quick stop, and set the desired angle of cut. Place the miter indicator on the fence to the desired angle on the miter table. Notice the Ryobi BT3100 has extremely large numbers on the miter table, so it's easy to align. Tighten the clamp down after you've found your mark and check again to make sure the table is clear and the miter fence clears the blade. Once again, remember, never cross the blade with any part of your body and keep your hands at least three inches away from the blade. If everything is okay, go ahead and cut your final piece. Remember, if you're using the miter table, remove the rib fence. And if you're making a rip cut, remove the miter fence. With the miter fence removed, we'll make a straight rip cut. Make sure the piece you're going to cut has enough support. Position the accessory table and the sliding miter table to provide the support necessary for the cut being performed. Position the rip fence the desired distance from the blade for the cut and securely lock the handle. Never push a small piece of wood into the blade with your hand. Always use a push stick. And if you're making a non-through cut, use a push block and feather board. The scale should be set to zero at the cutting edge of the blade. Make sure your piece is clear of the blade and go ahead and make your cut. The fourth cut on the list is the bevel cross cut. 
The first thing you want to do is set the angle of the blade. Move the bevel locking lever on the front of the saw to the right for angle mode and turn the wheel until the bevel indicator is at the desired angle. Push the bevel locking lever to the left to lock the angle in place and to raise or lower the blade and set the proper blade height. Using the quick stop on the left of the table or the miter scale, set the miter fence to 90 degrees. First, make sure the miter fence doesn't contact the blade and the workpiece will be properly supported behind the blade. If any corrections need to be made, go ahead and make them and then cut your piece. Before you make this cut, you need to make a wooden insert that will fit into the table. Take a piece of scrap wood and cut it to 5 inches wide by 22 inches long and 3 quarter inches thick. Now you need to remove both the miter table and accessory table and switch them. Put the accessory table on the left and the miter table on the right. Go ahead and lock the miter table down, but leave the accessory table unlocked. You can also lock the sliding feature on the sliding miter table if desired. Place the wooden insert between the accessory table and the saw table to support the workpiece. Now adjust the accessory table so that it's firmly against the wooden insert and lock securely. Secure the insert between the accessory table and the saw table by using two wood screws. You'll find two holes in the casting underneath the saw that you can use to tap into the wood. Reset the scale to the blade if needed. Attach the rip fence on the left side of the blade and lock it securely. Set the angle of the blade to the desired angle of cut and lock it in. Note that the rip fence is always on the left side when making beveled rip cuts. If the angle is fine, make the final cut. A compound miter cut can be very difficult if you're not familiar with bevel and miter cuts. Be certain you understand them thoroughly before attempting this type of cut. It's basically a combination of the two. Check the operator's manual for more details. That covers the six basic cuts in woodworking. There are two other situations that we should show you. If you're going to make 